Hello everyone and welcome back to Platform One. Today you're joining us for our 20th episode. Has it really been that long already? It it feels a lot less, doesn't it, really? <laughs> but at the same time, we've covered so much in those 20 episodes. And, well, let's be honest, we've got more to cover today, haven't we? So. It certainly has been. We're coming up to the end of the year now, of course, so there's a lot of excitement for Christmas coming up. Um, as we touched on in, a, in an earlier episode, we will be doing a couple of Christmas specials over yes. the period as well. We will have further details for you on those next week. But do get any questions down in the chat. We will try to answer as many as we can today, but we'll also uh, be able to feature more in our Christmas specials as well. But we've already had a couple of questions on in the oh, chat okay. today. So do you fancy answering a few already? Or? Yeah, I mean, we, we always do a good 10 minutes of Q&A at the end of the show. We're here for an hour today, but let's go for some at the start as well. If we've got them ready, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see who's down here anyway. We've got a lot of familiar faces here once again. Oh, Thank okay. you very much for joining us. We've got uh, Jamie Smith says hi. We've got Ethan Amstutz. Good morning. Bluegrass Rail fan once again. Hope it's been a good week and the 20th episode already. Uh, 700 Shunter, good day from Australia. And 700 Shunter asks, was there a locomotive that ran on the BR that was classified as a 9P? Ooh, not one I'm aware of. No, the no. closest that ever came was the 8P, the Duke of Gloucester. The numbers there are the power classifications of the locomotives as well. So the higher the number, the more powerful it is. So the closest there you got was the Duke of Gloucester, which was a sole locomotive that was 8P. But then you did get the huge 9F freight locomotives with the P standing for passenger and the F standing for freight. There so was a lot close. of those big freight locos, but not yeah. much in the passenger variety, wasn't there really? Um, we've got Lakota Farrow says morning from Georgia, 65 degrees of weather over there today, uh, which it's a lot, 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 more, lot colder over here lot today. Colder here. Uh, we've got Richard Lewis, a great show. Clive Cobbold, uh, another Friday video. We've got Kurt TV, says hi. Got um, Lakota for Alf again, says uh, up to episode 20. Everyone's excited about that today. And it'd um, be cool if we did something to celebrate the 100th episode. But uh, that's we'll work on that one. still off in the future, that one. Yeah, so we'll think about that. <laughs> that's it. We've got Flying Scott, says hello from the Netherlands. We've got Patrick Link. Hi, guys. Another busy week then. It is indeed. It's As always, always a busy week on Platform One. As always. Um, we've got... Uh, Kurt TV again, uh, Ben Davis, Caitlin Lee Luan, Andrew Keeley, uh, congrats on number 20, thank you. Thank you. We've got Zappa Time, love the show, and we've got Mark White as well. He says, um, great to see the 66, and could we put a driver in it, please? Um, not something we're looking at right now, but potentially something we could look at in the future as we have done crew figures before. And it is very easy to get into the cab on the 66 as well. It's just two clips into the glazing and it's very easy to add your own driver. So hello everyone who's a regular viewer. And for those of you who aren't, this is our platform one, our Friday live stream that we do every single week, bringing you all the latest model railway news on forthcoming products, hot new releases, some of our great bargains available as well. We'll be here for about an hour. Any questions you have, get them straight down in the chat and we'll be answering them throughout the show, both myself and Jack and our elves behind the scene who sort the questions out for us. But let's get started. That's it. And we're better to start than probably one of the quirkiest locos yeah. I think we've ever had, to be honest with you. And that's, of course, the Sentinel in O-Gage from Dapol, which you see in front of us right here, which is a, a geared shunter that's steam powered. It really is something unusual. This. It's quite a quirky locomotive built by Sentinel in the late 1920s and 1930s. Many of them went into industrial use, but the model we see here is actually the locomotives that ran under the London and North Eastern Railway from 1927 onwards. Yeah. There's two different types actually. There's a Y1 and a Y3. So I've, I know there's a bit of a difference there, isn't there? And it's to do with the gearing, isn't it? It is indeed. With these, they're quite unusual with them being vertical boiler locomotives inside the cab there, but also geared on the bottom as well. You'll see there's no connecting rods between the wheels where you get them on a more conventional steam locomotive. And with this, the difference between the Y1 is there was 15 of those built with a single gear. So essentially you had forwards and backwards. But on the Y3, there was 32 of those built and they had two-stage two gearing. So you could either use them for shunting or going a little faster. I think they got up to about 32 miles an hour, which in a little locomotive like that is quite a rickety That's ride, some really. That's feet, I suppose, for that but kind of speed. They really do look like no other locomotive on the rails. Certainly, like a lot of people confuse them with diesel locomotives because of that design. There's no discernible steam locomotive parts. But once you look inside the model, you can really see the vertical boiler detailing in there, a lot of the separate operating parts too. And that's through those huge cabs on the, had cab windows on the front there. And 
For such a quirky design, Dapol have absolutely crammed the detail into these as well, well as we can see on the up close well, pictures here. Yeah, that's it. We'll give you a closer look at these pictures here. And there's quite a lot of different livery schemes for these as well, which is really interesting for what is really an industrial shunter. It wasn't just black for these, you've got, and they operated for a long time. Yes. Obviously, you, you touched on before the amount of these that were built. There was 15 of the Y1s and 32 of the Y3s, which is not an unsubstantial amount of these produced for that time period. And they did manage to operate with quite a few different people, didn't they? They were obviously started off with the LNER, but there was also some built for the LMS. The GWR had one, didn't they? And they then did they... indeed. They had a trial locomotive, Icebrook, which I believe is coming up in a little soon. There's the LMS one that we referred to. So these were built shortly after the LNER locomotives. But they were very, very economical to run in real life, hence the popularity. Very small wheelbase, as you see there as well, allowing them to get around some really tight curves. And as we saw on one of deliveries previously, they went into departmental use, so not used on revenue earning traffic, more to help shunting yards or shunting sort of development areas and construction sites. And there we see the GWR version that was actually loaned to them for a number of years. But some great opportunities to get started in O-gauge with these because of the size of the locomotive there. They're barely sort of six or seven inches long, as you can see, but absolutely jam-packed with details. There's the more modern variation we see there in the National Coal Board livery. And these come in at under £150, which for an O-gauge locomotive is absolutely incredible. That's it. And as you will have been able to see, it's what we've come to expect from O-gauge models now, even of the smaller variety. Yes. It's the amount of detail that is present on these. I've just been gazing lovingly at this one on the desk for a while, to be honest. But the livery application, as you'd expect, is superb. You've got really nice details on the riveting on the side. You've got separate handrails, a lot of separate detail on the front. And of course, you've got your working screw and couplings there as well. Lots of detail on the inside on this one as well. And it's all painted up too. You've got all the controls painted out in there and the uh, boiler of course as Dave mentioned and that's got lots of separately fitted pieces on it so it's it's a lovely one to just have a look at this one as well and the main details in the cab are purely cosmetic really bringing that unusual vertical boiler design into the detailing but under the hood you still get all the usual details that we've come to expect you've got a really powerful motor there driving all four wheels as well and a great one for double o modelers who are just thinking of going up into o gauge maybe increasing the the size or just having a bit of an experiment in seven mil gauge is the 21 pin socket that double o modelers will be familiar with with digital operation there so there's no tricky soldering no complicated installation if you've got a normal digital controller and a spare 21 pin digital decoder you can pop it in one of these really easily and it's a great start to transfer your digital skills to a larger scale it is a simple jump up from oh really it from double oh sorry with one of these models and it's something that you don't really need a huge amount of track work to operate no. one with as well because really they rarely would have been seen on long trains and they were for yard shunting and small trips occasionally yeah. were necessary um, so it does mean that you don't have to have a gigantic garden layout or Not something so. taking over your entire house to run one of these things. You could set up an O-gauge layout really easily with this. And we've got everything else you need to get started if you did want to look to do that. We've got all the track you need, um, power connectors, everything there. So if whatever you need to get started with O, we can cover you. But as you say, this is one of the perfect ways to to get into that side it, of the hobby really it really is you could look at it at both angles it's certainly a novelty locomotive with its really unusual design come completely different to any other steam engine we have in our range at the moment with its design but also there as well the size the price the accessibility of this they ran right through into the 1960s there's oh, several of them in preservation today i believe one has just been painted back <coughs> into the br livery as well in preservation too so that's one to keep an eye out for so they are really accessible locomotives in real life there's some great opportunities to enhance that detail in the cab even further with a driver or a fireman in there too so some real opportunities to start off in o gauge especially as you touched on there you only need a couple of wagons and maybe a brake van and you've got a full operation there to get you started that's it and the beauty of these is there's something for everyone really isn't yeah. there because there's one for pretty much all of the big four aside from the Southern. You've got the LMS one that we showed, the LNER one here. And then of course, moving up past the, uh, the big four, you go into the BR era, yes. we've got that, NCB. It's incredible really that something this small, it did manage to make its way around 
a lot of the network really. That's so it. there's a lot there for you guys. Sorry, to I'm just enjoy. taking a look at the um, the chain drive detail there, which oh, is wow. the difference. You might not pick it up on the camera, but certainly on the images we've showed before. And of course, as always, we've got really high resolution images on our website. So click that link in the description if you want to see these really up close and personal. All deliveries we've just shown you are available to order right now. The digital versions will be in stock pretty much any time now. We've just so. had them delivered as we were coming on air, so they will be in stock within the next few hours. Or if you're watching this a little bit later on, they'll be available to order right now as well. With the digital sound fitted versions coming early January time, we've been told. So three options there for you, and they start at 148.75. But even for those digital sound versions coming in there are under 300, that's yes. incredible for an O-gauge locomotive as well. So it is really nice to see these sort of uh, locomotives becoming available in, in O-gauge and, and making it an easier start for if you're looking a, to move over. It's a really intelligent decision by Dapol to model these locomotives to make not only something more a quirky locomotive available in the scale, but also to give a lot of modelers opportunities to grow into O-gauge as well and start Absolutely, developing yeah. along there. So really do take a look at these if you're looking for that little bit of inspiration to get started in O-Gage. That's it. We've got a few comments here lighting oh, up okay. in the uh, chat. We've got Bluegrass Rail fan says, uh, he thought that those locos were double O and the HST was N, which just shows you <laughs> with its, it can trick you being such That's a small it. loco there. <laughs> Um, we've got Flying Scott says 30 mile an hour in that thing must have been terrifying. I'm, I'm sure that would have been would horrible. would have been a bit of a rickety ride, I think. So oh, absolutely. Maybe not an experience too often. <laughs> we've got Richard Spiderski says lovely models, but he's a double O modeler. We've got 700 Shunter says uh, the Sentinels would look great uh, paired with a diesel like a Class 17 Clayton. It is a really unusual design, this, because it is, it's almost a hybrid of a diesel shunter and yes. a steam loco here. And it's, it's kind of advanced for the time, really, isn't it? With that gearing mechanism, mm -hmm. it isn't really something that many other builders were trying, is it? They were a bit before the time and almost the genesis of the diesel shunter, really. And with them operating in the BR liveries right into the 1960s, there's some great opportunities to pair them, not only with a lot of steam, but some of the early BR diesels as well. And proved that it actually was quite a good design as well, if it operated for that long. Uh, we've got James Akers says, uh, don't suppose you know if the Sentinel shunters are available in double O gauge at all? They are available. I'm not quite sure if they're available at the moment. I don't think they are, but the current ones that are available are in O scale, as you see here. Fair enough. James has also asked where our Christmas jumpers are today, because it is Christmas jumper day. We've donned our Platform <laughs> 1 attire for the video, but we do have our own Christmas jumpers on as well. And do keep an eye on our hands, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, yes. as a lot of our team have come very seasonally attired today with some amazing jumpers on so we will be putting a picture on our um, on our social media pages later today so do check that out and you can see all of our team decked up for the christmas season including ourselves <laughs> indeed <laughs> uh and then we've got gareth wade down here and says that wow they really do look great um which they do they're really quite impressive they really are worth a closer look so check out that link in the description if you'd like to learn more absolutely do check that out Remember, guys, we're on till 2 o'clock today. Any comments that you want to get down in the chat, let us know. Anything you see here, pop your questions down there and we can answer those. And don't worry if we don't get round to your questions at the end because we will be putting them into another Christmas special episode as well. Yes. But where are we going to go from here? I think we've got a lot of hotly anticipated items that are, we've been told are either coming in just before Christmas or just after as well. And I've got to say, the one that most people are looking forward to from what we've heard is Hornby's Large Prairie in double O. This is the first release of this in BR Black, as we see on the screen now. And this is expected either within the next week or within the week after Christmas. So either an early Christmas present or a slightly later one. Well, this is one of the ones that they released as part of their last catalogue, isn't it? And it was one that received quite a bit of excitement from customers because it's something that, you know, it's such an identifiable loco, the Large Prairie. There's a lot you can see in preservation today. Yes. And it's really got a bit of an impact. It's, it's a huge tank loco really for it is. And they were used so heavily across the GWR and the BR that it's an amazing loco for a lot of layouts. So it's fantastic to see this one coming back with a, a newly tooled design. It is indeed. And it's one that's been on a lot of people's radar for quite a few years. As you can see here, they're bringing through a couple of different liveries. We see the GWR green that we've got there on the screen as well. But at the same time, this model has only been previously available in a slightly older tooling dating back to the Airfix days from the 1980s. So Hornby making a completely new model from the ground up. And you can see the reward there on the screen at the moment with the level of detail that's featured. You can see the full working valve gear there, a heck of a lot of detail at the front with separately fitted lamp irons as well. 
the various slight tooling differences between the GWR and the BR versions as well there, including the spoke box number plate. So some great opportunities to model these locomotives from the construction in the 1920s, straight through the BR era, and they've always been part of railway preservation scene, especially on those Western layouts and operating railways as well. So even into the 21st century, it's a great excuse to get one of these on your layout. Absolutely. I mean, these are widely renowned as some of the most reliable steam locomotives yes. produced, really, and with good reason because of how well they have operated over the years. And as you touched on, there is quite a few varieties coming through. Of course, that BR Black one is the one that's coming through first. Yeah. We should be receiving that within the next few weeks, uh, hopefully. And then as we go on, we'll be getting even more. So you, as you saw there, we're getting the GWR Green models in and there will be BR Green too. So there's something for, for most layouts there, really. There is indeed. And of course, they're all available to pre-order now. So if you check out that link in the description, the full information is there. Now Hornby are bringing them through digital ready and digital fitted as well. Great. So do take a look. Both options are available. I believe they start at £126, going up to £140 for the digital versions. But check out that link in the description, as ever, for really close-up high-definition images and to be able to pre-order yours. If you're not too familiar with the Prairie, but I mean, who isn't familiar <laughs> with the Prairie? We have got a few IRL images here as well. So um, here's one of it in use with the BR, with, for a courtesy of Brent, Ben Brooksbank there. There's a lot of great uses you can have these for. They were one of the Great Western Railway's standardised designs. The initial large prairies were actually built early in the 20th century, but standardised into this particular design in the 1920s. And as you can see from a lot of these images into the preservation days, they're still doing exactly the job they did back in service, but also a lot of different duties too. They worked on suburban passenger trains out of London and Birmingham on the Western region. They worked on a lot of the Welsh Valleys lines as well. Yeah. Even in some places during the early parts of the careers, they did help out on the crack expresses as well. Oh, right. A lot of the main expresses from the Great Western region. But being that 262 design, having a lot of coal and water capacity, being a very economical low code, have found a place in preservation too as one of the real stalwarts. We've over 15 of them preserved a lot of them in regular use too and you can see them pretty much all around the country oh, absolutely yeah. really getting out of that great western area being preserved at a lot of railways outside the region right up into the northeast and i believe a couple in scotland as well absolutely so there is a lot of opportunities to see these in real life yeah. and of course you'll be able to take one home onto your layout soon as well and this is going to be replicating that loco beautifully from yes. what we can see so far as you touched on briefly there is going to be a lot of features here as you saw from the photos really nice levels of detail as dave pointed out for you um lots of separately fitted parts in there there's going to be factory fitted digital models and that of course means they are digital ready as well so you can fit them up yourself if you so prefer and it's come with all the mod cons we really expect really yeah. there's going to be a heavy chassis in there really nice reliable five pile motor nem couplings the works it's going to be the model that the, the Prairie deserves, I think. It is indeed. After quite a few years since the model's release on the old Airfix tooling as well, it's about time the Prairie got a really high quality 21st century model. And it really fills an important gap for Great Western and Western region modelers too. So check out that description and take a look. That's it. Hit that link down there and you can find out all you need to know about the forthcoming models. But it's not just nearly two logos coming through, is it? We've got nearly two brake vans We as well. have indeed. We've got the LMS and the LSWR brake vans coming through. And this really completes the set for Hornby, who've yeah. tooled up five new types of brake van within the last few years. So we've had BR with the 20 ton brake van. We've had Great Western with the Toad. We've had LNER with the Toad B. And now it's the chance for the LMS with the standard 20 ton brake van. And these were the pretty much the end of the line for LMS brake van design, but they saved the best until last with these particular diagrams. With the D1919 diagram, as you see there coming through first, over 5,000 of these were built from the late 1920s onwards That's and became a crazy a, number, an isn't absolutely it? immense number there. But as you can see, they went through right into BR days to the point where BR also built some as well. So that good a design, you weren't initially replaced and saw service right through into the 1980s in regular traffic. But in some of the more unusual cases, such as on the engineering trains, they worked right through into the late 1990s in a couple of cases as well. So some real opportunities there to have a classic brake van, not only on a traditional BR layout, as you see there in the BR box site, but right through into some more modern liveries working alongside even 
modern electric locomotives and super sprinter multiple units. There really is a lot of opportunities with these. And as you say, it's something that's been missing from the range for a yes. while. And it's nice to have that fully complemented range of brake fans from every region and yeah. era really now available. So it's it's fantastic to see this coming back in. But as you would have been able to see from those photos as well, which I'll pop back on screen for you now, these are looking absolutely wonderful, really. There's so much detail on these, which is something, you know, for just a brake van, yeah. there's a lot to cover here, really. You've got that wood paneling um, on the sides there, as you can see. You've got, I believe, the rivet details on the sides. You've got those separately fitted ducats um, on the sides, which are the uh, side panel windows where you can see out. And as you can see when you've got both together there, you can see the differences in the tooling as well with the different size ducket and the ballast weights underneath the bauxite version as well. So really incorporating those changes in design. And this matches the Prairie in that the previous model of this was actually quite an old tooling dating back to the 1980s, which has been part of Hornby's range for quite some time, but also something that hasn't been available for a few years now. And again, something quite in demand by the LMS modelers was a high quality, fresh tool brake van. And this really does answer that call, bringing it through not only in the LMS liveries as we saw, the BR steam air and transition liveries, they're the ones that are coming through for now and they can be pre-ordered by clicking that link in the description, but there's some great opportunities in the future for more modern liveries for those of you who are diesel and sectorization modelers who want one of these classic vehicles on your layout. I think it's just the start for these really, isn't yes. it? And they're coming in at just 21 pounds, which is quite yes. a good price for what you're getting here as well. But again, that's not the only brake fan coming, is it? This is the final one now. So we've had BR, we've had GWR, we've had LNER, LMS, Southern. 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 So this is the XLSWR brake vans that we see. And again, this is something that's actually a new model this time. There's never been a model of these brake vans in double O scale ready to run. But Hornby have had a few Southern region brake vans in the range for some time but they needed a 21st century model, so this is what they came up with. Gives some great opportunities for liveries that we see here. The Southern R Railway had the quite distinctive brown and red livery there, but coming right through into the BR Grey as well. Again, thousands of these built right from the London Southwestern pre-grouping days before 1923, up through the Southern days, working into service into BR, didn't quite get as long as the LMS brake vans in service, lasted until the sort of mid 1970s in the last places. But at the same time, there's a little bit less freight on the Southern that needed brake yeah. vans. So it's, it's understandable as to why they went early. There's a few different variations here, isn't there yes. as well? There's two major tooling variations, which is for the 20 ton versions and the 24 ton versions. Yes. So the latter being a bit bigger as well, aren't they? It is indeed. So it's almost two for one in this project, really, to give some great opportunities to maybe go for one or one or more of these and again they're being brought through in the southern railway livery and they are being brought through in the transition sort of 1950s 1960s br liveries as well so whether you're an lms modeler or a southern model you've got some great opportunities for some new rolling stock there or even a pre-grouping model or two because yes. you do have that lswr version in there as well but that's not to say that we're missing out the other three as well, because as we've touched on, those models are already available to order right now. So you can already have high quality Hornby GWR towed brake van. You can have a high quality Hornby LNER towed B brake van or a high quality BR 20 ton brake van. So all four of the big four companies and BR are now covered by a high quality Hornby brake van. That's it. The range is it's, really- It's complete. Yeah, it's totally comprehensive now. And as you touched on with the LMS brake vans, that's probably not all there is to come yet. There probably will be yes. more of these in the future because there are other eras that can be covered by these with a incredible length of operation that they had. It certainly is. And all of them are available to pre-order right now. As with the Prairie, it's we're expecting them hopefully before Christmas, but it may just be in the week after as well. But as soon as we know a certain date, we'll be updating those descriptions on the website. So check out that link as you kindly pointed out and place your pre-orders or sign up for more info. And as soon as we have it and have them, we'll sort you out. That's it. We're really looking forward to getting these yes. items through as well, because as you say, it's really nice to have that full range available there and something for everyone really in, in brake vans. Right, we've got a few comments here about all the new Hornby items coming through. Okay. We've got, oh, bear with me for one second. We've got 700 Chunter who says the large prairies would look great in Brunswick Green with the Lake Crest. That is one of the versions that's available to order actually. So do check out that link in the description. They're coming through in two variations of GWR Green, 
BR black with the early emblem and BR lime green with the late crest as well. And again, there's more options for the future. So Absolutely, yeah. these initial four are just the start. That's it. But do check those four out in the description and you can see what's coming uh, in this first batch anyway. Yes. We've got Ben Davis says it looks nice. Um, he'd like Homie to do one in BR black with early emblem that's weathered. Ooh, which is something that's an idea. Hall, yeah. we do produce weathered models from time to time, so who knows what we may see in next year's catalogue and that's a point to make actually we are very close to finding out what Hornby will be announcing in their 2020 range that's on the 6th of January and we'll have all the details on our website as well so keep an eye on us subscribe to our Facebook and as soon as we know what's coming in there what we've been promised is a very exciting range as soon as we know we'll let you know we're excited to see it as you are really mm. so do keep an eye on our social channels and our website as well and we'll be posting it all live on the day yes. on the 6th of january um we've got ethan amstutz says uh, need an upgrade for their large prairie uh, he's got the original airfix one i think a lot of people will be looking along those lines now certainly with the level of detail that we saw there but if you need a closer look do check out that link in the description we've got some really high quality photos of these so take a look that's it We've got several hundred chances says excited for the LSWR break fans. Kurt TV says the break fans are nice as well. Jamie Smith says uh, they'd put on a flashing lamp onto the break fans, which would look really cool. Certainly something you can do, and we do sell flashing late break um, lamp kits as well. So if you'd want a little bit more information on that, let us know and we'll send you some information over. Brilliant. Um, we've got Bluegrass Rail fan says, are there any towns in the UK ever to purchase a brake fan to, for display in a park or something like that because over in America there's a lot of towns that have one representing the railroad that used to run through there. I can't think of somewhere exact off the top of my head but there's a lot of examples in the UK where either locomotives or rolling stock are plinfed in parks and yeah. sort of recreational areas as well. In fact there's I, one not too far from us in Liverpool there there's is, an yes. old dock shunter um, just there's it's a major um, four lane dual carriageway going through an industrial area and it's been left there as a marker of what industry used to be there and the railways that used to run so there is that sort of stuff does go on but obviously can't think of any specific brake vans I can't think of a brake van but I can think of a lot of examples where locomotives and rolling stock are so it sounds similar to the USA there where we've got quite a little bit of a placement for our heritage as well certainly around and I'm sure there's a brake van out there somewhere there's, there's, gotta, there's be. gotta be I mean, there's lots of examples of coaches used for homes and yes, hen houses and things like that. So I'm sure a brake van's turned up somewhere. If anyone does know, let us know in the comments. Yeah, I'd love to see that if anyone can find one. Um, we've got 700 chances going to have to buy both LSWR brake van variants and the BR one as well. I thought he may do. With a name like the 700 shunter, a LSWR locomotive, LSWR brake vans. I see what's going on. There. Perfect model for you, really. <laughs> Um, we've got Ethan Amstutz says uh, loving the LSWR van in LSWR livery and he's tempted to get that one and then we've got Richard Svidersky says the brake van's looking great as well so a lot of excitement there for the new brake vans. And as soon as we have confirmed dates on everything we've just spoke about the prairies and the brake vans and more coming from Hornby as well we'll be updating our listings so keep your eyes on those. That's it. Well, we've got even more exciting upcoming items now, haven't we? we? Have. But this time it's from Dapol, and you're probably able to guess what it is from the model <laughs> that's in front of me on the desk, and that's the next batch of the GWR streamlined rail cars that Dapol produced about a year or so ago it is. now. And the first batch of these went, to use a local term, they went like hot cakes, really. They absolutely flew off our shelves. Really popular models, quite an iconic design as we see there. But this batch has a little bit of a difference. So we've got the conventional liveries coming through there. These are renumbers and repaints of the initial batch as well. So some great opportunities if you did get a batch one model to expand your collection with a different running number. And as we see here, these go through the BR liveries as well as the GWR. So you've got the chocolate and cream carrying through there as well. And then we go right through into the crimson and cream too. So you've got some great opportunities, whether you're a 1950s or a 1960s modeler, to get them on your layout. Not forgetting the GWR guys as well. We've got them in the big four liveries too. I think it's three different variations there. And this is where it gets different. This is the parcels rail car version, number 17. It's actually a unique vehicle that was made purely for parcels traffic in the 1930s. And this is a whole new body tooling that they're bringing through in two liveries as well. 
As you can see there, it's going to be available in that GWR Express parcels delivery and the BR Crimson. So there's a couple of different opportunities to run these. And as you pointed out, this is a totally unique vehicle and it was really ahead of its time. Yes. The whole class was in respect, really, being a first of these sort of single car, multiple units that really kind of made headway and did get quite a lot of use, obviously, with them being used all the way into BR. But that parcels version is particularly special there because there wasn't really much like that before at all really the gwr really led the way with this development in the 1930s when a lot of the other companies were still mainly experimenting with petrol vehicles and some electrification as well the gwr was really hitting it hard with a lot of multiple units and diesel powered vehicles coming into use i think by the end there was actually about 60 of them in operation when they it's completed it really. yeah. with vehicles that were twin sets, parcels, cars, single units, some of them with buffets in them as well. So some real modern features there that you wouldn't quite think go right back to the 1930s. And the bonus with that as well is if you are a great Western modeler and you have a beautiful 1930s collection, but you do quite like diesels too, it's one of the few opportunities you can actually pair those big four companies with some diesel traction as well. And the model really does stand up well compared to it those really high quality steam locomotives coming through too. There's a lot of detail crammed into here as well. There's removable streamlining plates as well to cover the bogies if your particular model did have that or didn't as well. You've got full digital capacity in there as well. You've got an interior which is absolutely right for fitting some passengers in there as well. Well, it's with those big windows. It's just absolutely yes. perfect yeah. to have that to really showcase what these were used for. And this is a really stunning shape as well. You can tell just from Jack holding it up there and some of the photos that this screams 1930s art deco design where streamlining was all the rage well, and making it, even, it look modern and sleek. It even earned its own nickname, didn't it? I believe these were called the Flying Bananas when I they were in so. service. Obviously, there were a few different types of these rail cars as well. This is one of the more famous types that were produced and one of the more numerous as well in this very streamlined shape. But there was one that was called, I believe, the razor edge as well which is a lot sharper which Helgen's producing in O-Gage as well. That's it, there's some great models coming through there. This is the vehicle with the Great Western experimenting with these. They did go to a lot of different builders at the time. Yeah. This was built by the Gloucester Carriage and Wagon Works and quite a few of them actually. I believe about 18 of them were built with one at the National Railway Museum. Now if you do want to go and see it and they were brought in in the early 1930s. The later vehicles were built by AEC and they came through a couple of years later. And as you touched on there, Helgen are bringing those to the market in double O and O as well. So check those out too, because the two main types of GWR rail car are really getting some high quality models coming through there. Even from Dapol's re-release, including the parcels version, but also Helgen's model coming through as well. So if you really want to model the pioneering start of multiple units that we see everywhere yeah. in the UK today, this is where the story truly started. Absolutely. And it's a great homage to it as well, that there's still some around in real life and in model form as well. It's a perfect part of any collector who's interested in multiple units. And the beauty of these type of models is they're perfect for a huge variety of layouts, purely due to the size and the way they operated. Because being a single car unit with a cab at both ends, they only ever operated on their own. Yeah. So it's really easy to have this on a huge range of layouts, big or small, really. You could have it on a branch line on your huge loft spanning layout, or you could even just have a small end-to-end -end, um, branch line on wherever you wanted it, really, because it is so small. It's similar to other locos that we've shown in the past, like the Class 121s and 122 bubble cars, <laughs> for that reason, really, in that it is so easy to get one of these onto your layout. It really is. And, of course, as well, as we come to expect with pretty much everything we have on Platform 1, really, it's got that high-powered motor in there as well. It's got a smooth running mechanism. Even though they do run on their own, if you could put a couple in on them, I reckon they'd be able to haul quite a few coaches I as think well so, with yeah, the motor easily. that powerful. They've got really, you've got pickups on every set of wheels as well. They've got full digital capacity in there, working lights too, which is a little bit of an unusual thing for something that fits in the era four. But That's with it, it, yeah. With it being that multiple unit too. And, and it's got the interior lighting as well. It has it? indeed, yeah. yeah. But as we see there on the screen now, there's some great livery options for these. And a lot of these are in real direct contrast to the other liveries of the type. Pairing the Great Western Chocolate and Cream there with green steam locomotives. 
going through to the BR liveries, you compare them up with BR black steam engines or some of the early diesels as well. So quite a contrast of liveries op opportunities on your layout there as well. And of course, these are available to order right now as well. They're due in early 2020. And if you click that link in the description, you can order them either analog ready or digital ready as well. That's it, and they're coming through from just £126.40, yes. which for the level of detail you're getting and the operational opportunities is, yeah. is great, really. And as we touched on, completely feature-rich as well with those interior lights, directional lights, all of your detail and parts on there. It really is quite a lovely model, and we're really excited to see this one come back into the range again. It is indeed, and of course, as ever, as soon as we get a definitive date on those coming into stock, we'll be updating our listings, but a really great opportunity for GWR modelers and Western region modelers who just fancy a little bit of a different colour on their rolling stock than, than green. Well, it's something completely different, this one, isn't it? Especially in that crimson cream livery, it really does stand out, yeah. this one, doesn't it? And what else is there that's that shape? Not a lot, <laughs> not a lot. It's totally unique, and it's... Like you said, it totally exemplifies that era of rail yes. travel. So it's got to be on your Western region layout as well. It has indeed. Right, we've, as I expected, we've got a <laughs> lot of comments here about this one. So we're going to have to get through some of these. We've got GWR fan 1016, which already is screaming to me that they're hmm. perfect for them. <laughs> um, Crimson Cream, favorite livery. Right, I want one now. So I think they're convinced. We've got Medway Peninsula Model Railway says, uh, just put in an order for the DCC fitted BR chocolate and cream version. We've got Richard Svidersky says, um, <clears throat> we'll have to get a rail car, but which one? Oh, there's, again, there's quite a few to tempt you there, but as ever, if you're not quite sure which one's for you or you'd like a little bit of guidance, do get in touch with our customer experience guys in whatever way you want. Either leave us a message on the comments now or get in touch via our social media, send, give us a call, pop in the store, send us an email. We can help you get started as well. If you're not quite sure which one to go for, we'll give you some guidance. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got Joe Light Railway says, uh, like to get both passenger and mail chocolate and cream livery diesel rail cars. Uh, GDR fan 1016 again says, um, I model GWR modern era, so it won't really fit on the layout, but I like it. But as you pointed out, there are a few of these in preservation, aren't there? There are indeed, and with this particular Gloucester design, there is one based in the National Railway Museum, but the Razor Edge design that you mentioned before is coming through from Helgen. There's actually one of those based at the, the Didcot Railway Centre as well. I believe so, yeah. Which is just alongside where the modern GWR operates. So if you do want to put one alongside your modern GWR rolling stock, well, you've already got the example there. It happens exactly. in real life, so it can happen on your layout. There's always an opportunity there. There isn't always there? is. We've got Ethan Amstutz says, uh, tempted to get the flying banana in the parcel and the passenger ones in the chocolate cream as well. We've got James Akers says, do you know whereabouts the multiple unit is preserved? So, of course, as you pointed out, you've got uh, the Razor Edge ones there in the dig cart. We've got the Streamline ones in the NRM. Yes. There's a few about. And then we've got James Swift says, do they do sound for these rail cars? We offer a sound fitting service for them, so you can pre-order them on our website with sound. Again, check out that link in the description for the details on the price. But that is with the authentic sound in there as well. I believe these were Leyland engines in them. So I believe so, yeah. Similar to buses of the time, actually, but you do get that fully authentic sound in there as well. And as ever with Dapol Designs, there is space in there for a really big bass reflex speaker too, which we do fit as part of our sound fitting service. So if that's of interest to you, take a look we can get one fitted up for you. Excellent. Right, we're coming up to around 20 minutes left in the show now, guys. So we should have some time later on for some Q&A. So do get any questions down there in the chat and we'll try our best to answer them later. Yes. But now, you've probably seen we've got some buses on the table and these mm. are bang up to date buses here. This is the latest trio of releases from Northcore Models covering the Enviro 400 MMC from Alexander Dennis. And we've got a trio of liveries here, haven't we, in the uh, London Metro line? We have indeed. Stagecoach, and we've got First Glasgow there as well. So some real iconic operators that people will see all across the country in those familiar colour schemes as well. And it is a little unusual for us to have road transport on platform one, but at the same time, we couldn't miss out on these particular vehicles, just looking at the quality that you see there. These absolutely ooze details coming out of them. And really you do. took a really close look at these when they, they arrived. I have. I got the chance to have a really nice close look at these models. And it really did just show to me how impressive these are. They really are the creme de la creme of modern buses, these models. And there's a few things I just really like to point out, to be honest with you. <laughs> What, one thing I noticed is there's a lot of separately fitted parties. Yes. So obviously, as you'd expect, you've got your separately fitted mirrors here, but 
unusually, there's actually a tooling variation here. There is indeed. So with the first Glasgow bosses Dave has kindly just passed <laughs> to me, as you can see, there's actually different mirror designs on show here. So the Metro line and a few of the other variants have got the traditional uh, large boss mirrors there. But as you'll notice, this one's got these small black pods on the side, which I believe uh, for camera operated yes. mirrors instead. Um, which is very futuristic, of course, but that's what we're getting into with the bosses now. But it's great to see that that toy variation is there, so these are as realistic as possible. You've got other separately fitted parts, like the uh, handrails for deflecting the trees there, and all the interiors are fully detailed and painted up correctly as well. So as you can see in this first one, you've got the grey seats with the pink handrails. In the other ones, you've got the blue seats for stagecoach and the orange handrails. So it is really nice to see this level of attention to detail. and. And that's not just on the model as details as well, is it? Because on the back of, certainly on the Glasgow bus here, on the side and on the back, as we see, but on all the vehicles in front of us and the full range available, this is some of the finest printing I've ever seen oh, yeah. on a double O scale model. A lot of the advertisements on there, the destination blinds and the route indicator on both ends as well there. So these really do have the finesse to them. And they do have to place on a heck of a lot of model railways as well. They are right up to date with 2017 and 2018 registrations, as you can see on the images there, coming back to some of that high quality advertising features as well. But at the same time, pretty much every layer out there has a road on it as well. So there's some great opportunities for cameo scenes, for interchange stations, which are an iconic scene of the modern railway as well. But of course, as we've touched on, that scene will be made all the better for the fact that this is so detailed and it'll be just as home as your highly detailed locomotives and rolling stock that you'll have on your layout as well. But as you can see from these photos, you will be able to see that amazing level of detail that is in here. And there's another variation which I forgot to mention before, which is there's actually different destination blind types depending on the yes. operator. So some of them have got dot matrix displays, some of them have got paper displays, some of them have got different types of digital displays on there, and that is all covered on the model. So whichever variation you're getting, it's gonna be correct to it as it is in real life. Now, if you're not too sure about these buses in real life, they are the advancement of the Alexander Dennis Enviro 400, which has been produced for quite a few years now yes. since the early 2000s and is seen quite a lot across the country. And it's the MMC variant, which has been produced from about 2014 onwards. There's been a lot of these produced, hundreds in fact, and you can see them, I think even thousands by this point, but you can see these all over the UK really, from everywhere from the south, right up to Scotland, as you can see with the first Glasgow variant, in the center of London with the London variants, even around here in Liverpool, we get yes. to see them. So it really has become one of these commonplace general buses, almost up there with the likes of famous buses like the Leyland Titan or the Leyland Atlantean, for how much they got about around the country yeah. and how much of a general sight they were to see. So. To have this model available in double O gauge is fantastic because it, it you see them everywhere. So for any of you guys with a modern layout, you kind of need to have one of these on there. And they're a great addition to add. And of course, they're available to order right now as well. So check out that link in the description. They're available from £48. We do have further liveries than we have here as well. We have some Reading buses too, as well as Stagecoach South coming in in the near future too. And so take, to come take, a look, take a look at the details there as well or place your order. That's it, do check out that link in the description and you can see the high def photos of these as well and really see how, how nice these really yes. are. Um, we've got a lot of comments here as well for the buses. We've got Graham MCK says, the North Court First Glasgow is a really nice model. The real bus was launched in George Square in Glasgow in a huge blue box they with a one-to-one -one scale yes. on the side. I've seen that, it's yeah. a fantastic bit of marketing <laughs> that. Um, we've got Jamie Smith says, it's great to see some road vehicles on platform one. So, uh, glad to hear that. And we might have to start bus stop one at this, this <laughs> rate, you know, it's to see how we do. Bus station one or something <laughs> there. Uh, we've got Bluegrass Rail Fan says, indeed, they help establish location as much as trains do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We've got Richard Lewis says, you wait ages for a bus to come and a free come along together. Uh, they look great. We've got Joe Light Railway says, likes the Sagecoach Route 64 bus, as that's the one that goes along the mid Hanch Railway from Alton to Winchester. So that's a great opportunity to pair one of these modern bang up to date buses with some really classic locomotives as well. Just another modeling opportunity. There is always an opportunity. <laughs> 
And then we've got GWR fan 1016 again, says, quite interested in the Stagecoach South one, as they model a great Western. As you said, it would fit in very nicely on a GWR modern layout. It certainly would. And if you're interested in that one, take a look at the description, as we are taking pre-orders for it, available in a new year. Brilliant. Glad to see you guys so excited about that. And if there is anything you want to see us feature in the future, don't, uh, don't feel free to pop that in the comments, and we can certainly consider it for future episodes as well. Certainly. Now we're coming up to our real life story of the week now, yes. aren't we? And this is another one that might be a little bit bittersweet for some mm -hmm. because it's marking the, the end of operation for the high speed train, as you can see in front of me here. This is the last operations along the East Coast main line where the multiple, the locomotives have really made the name over the last 40 years. Introduced in 1976 along this line, they worked between London King's Cross and destinations such as Leeds, Newcastle, Edinburgh, right up to Inverness as well, on services such as the Highland Chieftain as well. So really making their name completely transform services along the line until electrification came in, but they've still had the place since then. But unfortunately, after 40 years trusty service, their time is up, being replaced by the Class 800 Azuma units. That's it. They've been in operation still for some time now alongside the Azumas and also with the Class 91 uh, in City 225s, which also will be eventually leaving the, lay uh, the layout. The um, I suppose it's one giant layout really, isn't it, in real life? Um, they'll be leaving the scene as well at some point in the next few years. But LNER has chosen to mark the occasion yes. in quite a nice way, really, and they are producing a special event next week called Let's Go Round Again, the last Intercity 125. And as you might be able to tell from that graphic, they're actually going to be painting up an entire set yes. back into BR Blue Grey Intercity 125 livery, which is incredible. Not, and it's going to be an amazing photo opportunity, that, not isn't it? Not just one or two vehicles, it is a full HST set yeah. as well. All the coaches in the middle, that's being fully repainted at the moment. And we're really excited to see that out on the network. Absolutely. And it is doing a four day tour as well of all the LNER operation. Started up in Scotland, going right up to Inverness and working its way down over those four days, coming south through Leeds and Newcastle down and finishing appropriately in King's Cross in London. Where it should do, really. But of course, it isn't the end for the HST. You've still got them operating with GWR on the short set. You've got them up with ScotRail. Yes. They're still operating with Cross Country. And the ones that are going off lease, they are potentially going to be moved to over operators as well. So they're not going for scrap just yet. But of course, it is amazing to see this one being painted up into that resplendent BR Blue Grey livery, which we're really excited to see. And of course, you can commemorate it on your layout with one of the whole BHSDs like we have here. There is plenty of these LNER liveried models available and there is a few other variations such as the Scottware ones too. But if you really want to recreate that East Coast charm with the LNER models, you can do that right now with Hornby's beautiful model. And Hornby's model we've featured on our stream before when the, I believe when this livery first came out actually a couple of months ago, but it's absolutely jam packed with details. You've got the full resplendent LNER livery there as well with the red and white. You've got fully working directional headlights. You've got the digital capacity with space for a huge speaker in there, replicating the iconic sound of those MTU power units. A lot of separately fitted details on the underframe you can just see there as well. The high finesse of the printing on that swoosh design too. Full cab interior, as you can just make out there. The roof fans as well, separately fitted. So really high quality detail on these. And again, as you touched on, the story of the HST continues even after 40 years with this iconic ScotRail livery coming into service between Glasgow, Edinburgh and the Highlands as well. So these are two available to order in the ScotRail Seven Cities livery, as well as the coaches, which are available to pre-order right now to go in the sets as well. It is wonderful that the HST story isn't over and it is still going to carry on, but of course it is the end for that, really it's main stomping ground of yes. the East Coast. So I believe the last main passenger service will be running on Sunday, so if you do want to get your last trips in, now is the time to do that. But you lucky few who will be on that rail tour over, the, over four days next week, we'll love to see some photos of that coming through and if you do get a chance to go on it or you get to see it in real life do share your photos with yes. us on social media as we would love to see what that looks like and I think some of us might have to try and see it for ourselves somewhere so see what we can do a eh? couple yeah. of hours out of the office there maybe hopefully hopefully <laughs> um brilliant so one last thing before we head on to our Q&A of course is Model Rail Magazine's Model Shop of the Year Awards. Yes. Now we've very, very gratefully um, been 
part of, of, of this awards mm -hmm. now. And there's a few different uh, categories in there. Of course, the main award is Model Shop of the Year. But there are a few other awards in there for um, convenience and uh, experience within the store and things like that. Um, and we would really appreciate any votes for Hattons if you feel like you've had great service in the store. Got a few photos going through now of the store itself. Uh, if you have enjoyed your shopping experience in fans, we would really appreciate your help in, in voting for us. And that link to find out how to do so is in the description now. And it's been fantastic to provide quality service for pretty much everyone into Model Railways for over 70 years now as well. And with our fully, fully stocked store there that you see in the images as well, which is open seven days a week too, it's great to get in there and find some bargains or get some really good knowledge as well. Uh, so if you do feel or you've been along to the store that you've had fantastic service with us, well, thank you very much for coming to start off with, but please do vote for us as well in the competition. That's it. Every vote helps and we do really appreciate every customer who supports us with this. And just for shopping with us in general, it is really appreciated that yes. you guys shop with us, watch the show, and join in on our other social media platforms and on our website as well. So it is really all appreciated you being involved in the Hans community. All right. So I can see there's a lot of Q&A questions mounting okay. up here for you. So are you, are you ready for this? Are we, are Ooh, we ready? Let's, let's go. Let's limber up. Let's get some questions <laughs> on the go here. We've got about 10 minutes left, guys. So we're going to try and get through a bunch of questions now. If there is anything you don't get the chance to get the answer to, as Dave said, get in touch with our help desk any way you like, and they can help you out if there's a burning question. But of course, we will save some for our Christmas special episodes, which we will have more news for you on next week as well. Yes. Right, we've okay. got... Here we go. Let's see what we've got. Uh, we've got Medway Peninsula Model Railway says, Hi, just like to thank your orders team as he ordered on Wednesday afternoon and received his parcel on early Thursday morning. So that's great Fantastic. service. So. We do try and get them out the same day. Well, pretty much get all of them out the same day, really. So if you need something quick and fast, do send us an order and we'll get it out to you as soon as we can. Our oh, pickers and packers are speedy guys downstairs. Yeah. So they do try their best. So it is great. Really appreciated all comments like that. Uh, we've got Ben Davis says, did you watch Sam Strain's video on the Class 66? Of course, we were Certainly did. very pleased for Sam to take a look at the 66. There has been a couple of videos out there now on the model. You can see Everard Junction trying it out on his layout. Jenny Kirk has had a go of one as well. And there is one on Sam's channel too. So do check out those reviews of the 66 and, and see what you think as well. Yes. We've got James Akers um, asking about these Christmas jumpers again. Do you check out our social <laughs> media and you'll be able to see a picture of all our staff uh, in the Christmas There's jumpers. There's a lot of jumpers in the office today, including our own as well. So check out our Facebook soon and we'll put a picture up of us all in our Christmas jumpers. There really are some great ones. Um, ben Davis says, did you hear that the Class 144 Pacer is heading to the Great Central Railway? I, I believe did so, read yes. that on Facebook before, actually, which is fascinating to see. I believe Angel Trains has actually offered the 142s as well um, at the going rate to any yes. preservation railways or communities that need them. So I'm sure a lot more will be heading over. And we featured that last week, that story on Platform One as well. So if you want to catch up with the fate of the Pacer, do watch last week's episode by checking out our YouTube channel. But at the same time, the story's not over yet, as we can see there with Ben commenting. So who knows what twists and turns may happen for the Pacers in the future. I think it's going to be really strange going to a heritage railway and, and riding on a Pacer though in the future. It's It'll modern, make me feel a bit old, I think. Modern history. <laughs> It is, it certainly is. And of course, 142001 is destined for the NRM as yes. well. So be interesting to see that in a museum. We've got Jamie Smith says, uh, when are the LNER Mark III coaches coming out to go with the LNER HST? We've had some into stock already that have unfortunately sold out. However, the rest of our stock will be arriving on Tuesday. So you can place a pre-order for those now to go right in the middle of the two iconic power cars there as well. So take a look at our website, get your pre-orders in and we'll have them with you before Christmas. We've got Clive Cabold says, uh, would like to see Hornby make a class 86 slash one or two electric locos in rail blue or intercity livery in 2020. It's certainly something that may come up in the catalog. And as we touched on before, Hornby's announcement is on the 6th of January, 2020, and we'll be featuring it as soon as we know on our website as well. So do subscribe to the website, take a look, and we'll put the updates on there. If you are after a class 86 in double O gauge, 
do take a close look at Helgen's locomotive as they're producing the as-built Class 86 Zeros in the 1960s and 70s BR Blue liveries, but also the 86.4 and the 86.6 locomotives in those bang up to date liveries, as well as Freightliner, Caledonian Sleeper, as some of the really nice 1990s liveries where you've got Intercity, Rail Express systems as well. And Absolutely. all the detail on that is on our website. We've featured them a couple of times on Platform One as well. So catch up on some of the old episodes and all the details are there. Brilliant. Just on that as well, we've got Jamie Smith asking um, if we might see the Hornby Pendolino come out in the new Avanti green livery. So who knows? It might mm -hmm. be something that we see. Obviously, there's been a few different liveries on the Pendolinos since we last saw Hornby's model in stock. Yes. You've had the white one, you've had a uh, virgin flowing silk, business is great. Uh, and of course, Avanti as well. So it might be something that we see, but of course, you're going to have to keep an eye on our website and see what, what comes it. through. Uh, we've got Flying Scott asks, is there any news on the Queen Anne liveried Rostons? There is indeed. That's another one joining those L and the R Mark 3s. They will be with us on Tuesday as well. And they are available to pre-order. Also alongside the Queen Anne, we're expecting the final livery of the Ruston as well in the War Department Green. So we do have three available. We have the John Dewar's Red, which is available to order right now if you'd like one. Or on Tuesday, we're receiving the final two. So if you've got a pre-order or you'd like to place a pre-order, Tuesday is the day. Brilliant. We've got Don Juan King Fox Junction. Um, what's the best point motors? He's what in OK gauge, but uh, that could be double O or O there. It could Have indeed, and there's a lot of different ways you could go with point motors, either in double O or O as well. A lot of it's down to personal preference as to whether you want them underneath the points or the surface mounted points alongside, whether you want them seep or solenoid types as well. It's quite hard to say what's best as it really is down to your individual requirements. The best thing I'd suggest there for you is to get in touch with our customer experience team because we do sell pretty much every type of point motor yeah. and we can advise you exactly what is best for you, whether you want them next to your point, underneath your point, whether you want the solenoid, the seep, what works best for you, we can sort you out with. So let us know your exact requirements there in whatever way works for you and we'll get you sorted. Absolutely. Um, we've got Kurt TV asks, because he's got HST, but it's not working, unfortunately. And um, would we know what to do to fix it? Again, that's another one where mm. you, you can get in touch with our help desk and you can certainly ask any questions like that. Yeah. Give them a little bit more detail about what exact issues you're having. Um, any information at all is really helpful and they should be able to, to help you out with that we'll one. see what we can diagnose there for you. Let us know some more details and we'll see what we can do. That's it. We've got Anthony Strathmore Road Junction says uh, he's got a question about the Dapol HIA wagons in O-Gage and if we're getting any more in. Now they have done three batches of those already in double O-Gage and as we've touched on before as soon as they come in they do sell out. I believe we've still got some stocks of the third batch there so take a look at our listings and see what we have available. It's likely that they'll produce some more in the future. There's no plans to yet, but I wouldn't put it past them to be quite honest. But what I would do is sign up for a notification on the current vehicles as as soon as any more get announced, we'll let you know. Those 33 batches just sold for immediately as they well, do. didn't they? So you have to act fast if those come in. Um, we've got Bluegrass Rail Fan says he managed to find a British Railway magazine at the bookstore the other day while on a rail fan outing. Kind of surprised him to find one over there in the States. Now, I wonder if that could be the liveries hmm. of British Railways bookazine, which we've recently had into stock. Could and I actually be. have the privatization one here next to me. Now, these have just come into stock and these are a fascinating read, to be yes. honest with you. This literally has come into stock today. And it's just got everything you could ever need to know about all the different vibrant privatization liveries from pretty much every operator. It's all the major liveries are in here. And it's a great reference guide. Um, for your layout as well. And of course, there is, as Bluegrass said, there's a British Rail version, that, which I, I presume is the one he's picked up there. And there is a privatization one as well. And it, it's really, really useful guide, this. And both of these are great stocking fillers as well. They're available to order right now from our website for $7.99 each. The first one covering the BR liveries from 1948 until the mid-1990s. And the copy that Jack's holding there covers the privatization era from the mid-1990s to the current day. It works on a couple of different levels. There's great opportunities for people who are just really into the history of the railways to see the changes in the colour schemes that have gone through. But one of the things I think we sound a little bit like a broken record on platform one sometimes is saying just how some models are in some really vibrant colour schemes and will stand out completely on your layout. 
There's no better way to see something like that than there is in one of these bookazines where you can see all those colours under the sun. Pretty much every variation there as well to get some real inspiration for your layout just to see what colours of the rainbow you're missing and where you can fill those gaps. So really good stocking fillers. We can have them with you in time for Christmas. So looks like Bluegrass has potentially got his copy, but if anyone else would take like a look, do take a look on our website and they're available to order. That's it. And that's not the only bookazine we have in stock as well. There's a lot of other ones on there. So there's sure to be something to pique your interest and across various different sectors as well. So do check those out. Right, we've got one minute left here. So I think we can answer we can one. squeeze some more. Should we get a festive question in here Sounds to end the to show me. on? I think that's a nice time of the year to do it. We've got Kelly Ashford here and she says, uh, which train set would you like to have under your Christmas tree? Oh, I think the one for me is the Coca-Cola train set. Oh, I took the words I out of my mouth. I think that's the one really to go for. We do, Again, we do have those available at the moment, but absolutely perfectly made just to squeeze under a Christmas tree there. As well, you've got the circle of track, you've got the iconic locomotive that we've featured on Platform 1 before as well. Definitely one of the highlights of the year for the great new train sets coming through. So that's the one I'd go for. Absolutely. I think that's my favourite too, but if I had to pick something else, there is a lot of variety out there mm -hmm. in train sets at the moment, and there's more coming through too. Really exciting one that is due soon is the GWR HST train set as well. Yes. So if you're looking for something thoroughly modern, there's something there for you. And there's some lovely steam sets out there, which I'd love to have under the tree, like the uh, mixed freight sets out there as well. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of choice. There's too much choice, I think, for Christmas train sets at the moment. <laughs> Right, unfortunately, that is the end of the show for today. The end of our 20th episode, in fact. I can't believe we've got there already. It's gone really quickly. But, of course, every week, it just seems to get busier and busier. It does indeed. We've always got so much to cram into Platform 1. There's some great new releases coming through at the moment. Lots of different scales and variations, too. Different types of vehicles. Always the news is here as well, but do subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep in touch with Platform One. We also put up a lot of interviews with regular YouTube stars. We feature the models in a lot more detail as well and pretty much everything goes on the channel as well. Absolutely. We put up some great content there. We've got a fully stocked Facebook page too and other social media channels with all the latest model railway news on there too. Of course, our website has the whole range of products and details on there too as well. So. Keep in touch with us, essentially. Absolutely. We're always posting. We're always out there. Anything you've seen today as well, there are links in the description to find out more about that. If you join the show late and you want to re-watch it again, check out the video in demand after the show yes. on YouTube or on our website as well. And I think that's about it, really. So that's it. We'll catch you guys next time. Of course, keep an eye on our Facebook for the Christmas jumper photos and uh, all the other model news that's coming through <laughs> and everything else. And do keep an eye out next week for news on our two Christmas specials that we'll be doing over the festive period as well. We'll, you won't be, back miss here. It. we'll be back here next Friday at one o'clock GMT, and we'll see you then. See you later, guys.